Oh, I am live. <laughs> I'm just going to uh, make a note here because I just thought of something really cool. Create an oracle deck around the little you. I am very excited to do that. I have like makeup photos as well. <clears throat> So hi everybody. I am, I believe, in the soulful empowerment group. I'm seeing somebody go, hey, hey, hey. There's a song that goes with that. Um, something. Oh, it's April. April Levine is who I'm hearing in my head. Is April Levine? Um, I don't need your boyfriend. <laughs> Okay, I am just going to find these comments so that I can see who's commenting. <clears throat> there I am, live. Kelly and uh, Sue. Hey, how's it going? So, um, if you click on that, I'm going to going live using Streamyard. Please, before leaving comment, please grant. Uh, stream your permission to see your name if you click on that it just takes you off screen for a moment and uh, then you can come back on and it um, it shows me the comment okay so stream your hi everybody <laughs> now let me get this so that I've got two screens happening here Let's get over there make that smaller so I can see the comments okay let's put that up there Move that over, scroll, scroll, scroll. Where's the questions? Loving the little little getting ready bits, hey? Okay, so here we are. I am at it. <coughs> Personal truth coming up, throat chakra stuff already being activated. Uh, I am ready to step into the energy of answering these questions now. Uh, if you put questions in the feed, as I'm doing this, if you put questions on the feed in the Soulful Empowerment, that works. And I also have the Q&A feed that, that uh, I'm actually put the question post. So I'm actually got there too. So I am, let's say three minutes in. Okay, there we go. And answer, there we go. Da, 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 da. Okay, so I'm going to start with Sue Miller. Sue Miller says, actually, you know what? Let's ground first. Ah. And I'm going to do something that we're going to do a lot of over the, the Empowering Extravaganza. We're going to tap into the energy of either using a slide or a swing. If it's a swing, just do a swing through your heart space. If you're doing the slide, follow along with my directions now. So tapping into the energy of that little you on the top of your head, taking a breath. Creating this beautiful slide into your heart space. And ask the little you to slide down the slide and feel the woo wee. <laughs> Asking that the mind, body, and soul does whatever it needs to do to heal in this space. Being open to receiving any answers to any questions known and unknown as well. I'm going to ask you to take this one step further, actually. I'm going to actually ask you to uh, write down or the, whatever the questions are that other people are asking. There's something in the information that's coming through that is also important for you. So in that space, write down those key words or those sentences that I'm saying as an answer to other people so that you have this running dialogue of answers for yourself, okay? It's a very, very powerful exercise. I'm just going to just go edit this. I've answered this, actually. I'm going to answer it now. I'm going to Sue Miller's first. So bear with me here a moment as I prepare myself. So her question is, Hi, Sandra. What do my guides want? me to know regarding how coaching others to find their inner wisdom through art will help me on my journey like this finally <laughs> your guides are going finally <laughs> see oh my gosh i'm so excited about this question so i'm going to read this again what do my guides want me to know 
regarding how to coach others to find their inner wisdom through art. Okay, so you kind of it, it kind of loses some some understanding at the end. So what do my guys want me to know regarding how coaching others to find their inner wisdom through art will help me on my journey this year? Okay, I read it that differently this time. One more time. What do my guys want me to know regarding how coaching others to find their inner wisdom through art will help me on my journey this year? I love that. You know what? It is honestly in the coaching as I mean, you you've been a part of the medicine wheel. Um, there's many on here who've been a part of the spiritual how to and the medicine wheel programs in both of those areas. And you have all literally witnessed how we feed off each other, how we learn off of each other. So coming in to coach others, first of all, starting from your own personal experiences is, is very, very powerful. In listening to their comments, being if you're doing an open forum type of event like I do, where where you're very interactive and you're you allow the others to express how they're doing or what's holding them back, it's in those moments that you learn and heal yourself as well. Very very powerful. Um, that's what's been unfolding for me. You know, it's not like I suddenly discovered I was I'm not unconditionally loving myself because I was just going for a walk outside. It was because I happened to be in something, doing something with a group that it suddenly came to my awareness that I was not loving myself unconditionally. So that's what's so very, very powerful about that next step. You know what? You, like, I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if you guys know Sue. She is an incredible artist. Okay, like absolutely fantastic. I actually have three of her pieces of artwork, three pieces of artwork of hers. Um, the latest two just arrived the other day. If you know her, you've seen the post where she said they arrived in Canada and they are so beautiful and so magical. And I am just in awe that they're mine. And I would love to be able to create like her. My artwork is a whole different type of artwork versus the way she does her artwork. And to be able to tap into that, um, that type of artwork where there's such beautiful lines when I am so abstract, um, I, I really admire that. So how do you do that, right? Like when, when, you, when you step into the energy of that, you know, you're just learning how to create boundaries and yet you've created such incredible boundaries in your artwork, meaning that, you know, the truck picture, um, the truck piece of artwork has got such beautiful curved lines. Like I can feel the energy of that vehicle. I can feel the power of that vehicle. And as you teach, that's going to come out even more. The things like my love grew because I was teaching love to people. So my love for myself grew to the point where this year, and this brings up so much emotion, where this year I could actually start to say that I'm loving myself unconditionally in moments. And that's a powerful, powerful place to be. Wow. Wow. Hi, Marie. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Sue. Hi, Kelly. Y'all, you're here. <laughs> Loving the energy of that. Whew, that was a big one, hey? That was a really, really powerful one. Beautiful. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, Zila, if you guys haven't asked a question in the question feed, um, the Q&A uh, post, then feel free to write your question in the comments under this uh, live, okay? So Zila writes, I'm just going to put the, the how long in first. So she's got an idea of when to come and take a look nine minutes in so hi sandra any guidance on how i can best support my mother right now very powerful question and i'm just feeling the energy of that um there's it feels like there might be some expectations coming up around that there so often is i've been there i know that from personal experience um one of the most powerful ways to support her is first of all to recognize that it's entirely out of your control and that the most powerful thing that you can do is send her love, like literally um, wrap her in a beautiful bubble or, or this or energy blanket, if you will, whatever color comes up and just allow the universe and yourself uh, to, to give love to her and just really allow her to feel extremely loved. The um, I am open mantra. I am open with no expectations, no limitations of being okay with the outcome. 
for breathing your way through that will also help you to step back out of her way because even if it's only you that's getting out of her way that makes a huge difference on what her path then looks like okay so let me read the next part of this so the first part was hi sandra any guidance on how i can best support my mother right now and is there anything my guides want me to know right now around this and the situation with my dad okay let me tap into the other part of this let's let's see here i'm just moving the screen a bit here too okay is there anything else that your guides i've, I've given you given you good advice so there's something about your dad's energy and it's so very intriguing because there's some learned behavior there going on with your dad around maybe some actions that that happened between him and his mother because I'm getting a sense of apron strings with regards to him. So I would recommend, um, now you're part of another group where you actually have access to this. If not, you can go find it in another place. But there is a higher self lesson in Membership for Your Soul, and I know you're a part of that. Um, so it, that higher self lesson, it was created by myself. It also can be found, for those of you who are not in Membership for Your Soul, it can also be found in the Metaphysical School by Tina Dubois. She's uh, created the Metaphysical School. I create the Higher Self lesson in there as well. So if you tap into the energy of working with his Higher Self and uh, allowing him to connect with also, so your Higher Self, your mother's Higher Self, your dad's Higher Self, your grandmother on your dad's side's Higher Self, connecting with all that lineage there and then ask for healing to be done ask for the it feels like feels like I did this really cool process and I'm, it feels like I'm bouncing all over the place so bear with me here a moment I did this process with one beautiful animal communicator and her own personal pets where um, the one dog was very near the end of its life and sh she wasn't sure why the dog wasn't passing on naturally because it just really felt like the, the dog was hanging on hanging on and hanging on and so what we did was we went in and we connected with the higher selves and we created this beautiful, very, very long bungee cord like uh, cord of energy. And that feels like that would be very beneficial working with your dad and, and his mother's energy is creating this very long cord and then create that same cord between your dad and your mom <clears throat> as well. And then you're you are kind of not separate, but you're coming in from both different angles as well with this big long bungee cord and just allow that bungee cord to be very long like going around the world kind of event okay so that should be able to help a little bit <clears throat> sometimes we have to do things in the energy rather than getting in their face and saying it to them verbally okay thank you so much uh, Gila I believe is how you say it thank you I just remembered that you actually say your name a little bit differently okay so next question Hmm, feeling the flow. Hi, Robin. <clears throat> and who else is here now? Uh, Sue, yay! <laughs> Did you hear my answer, Sue, for you? Okay. Uh, so um, I'm going to actually go over to, to uh, that was Sue Miller I was just speaking to. I'm going to do Colleen's question, and then I'll come back to you, Sue, uh, said and send it. Uh, where is my where's my other page there it is there. <clears throat> okay Colleen okay answered 13 we'll say 14 minutes in <clears throat> not 114 14 <laughs> there we go okay Colleen is asking hi I am wondering if you're receiving anything from my guys regarding what is it I need assistance healing well, you know, the Sandra Pelly version of this is we all are are all being asked to recognize those shadow pieces of ourselves, whatever those may look like, and that it could actually be the little you because I've got an empowering extravaganza coming up right away. So uh, it's a perfect opportunity to really kind of tap into the energy of that little you. But let us let me dig in a little deeper in to see what specifically. And as soon as I started doing that, I'm getting this, this straight down my one leg all the way down and it feels like i i have some major energy flowing from the, just above my right knee to um uh, like my foot's even numb actually come to think of it my foot's even numb so when we tap into the energy of all that louise heal hey heal your body 
let me grab my glasses and see what it says. I, I know, first of all, it's about some something to do with how you're standing in the world is coming through. Um, and also to the giving of service, because I can feel the energy of knee. And when we go down on our knees, right? Um, so let me just take a closer look. Knee. Um, it says here, stubborn ego and pride, inability to bend, fear, in a inflexibility and won't give in so forgiveness and understanding compassion um, you're being asked to bend so just kind of tap into the energy of feeling how you want to flow around the knees energy and feel that energy vortex calling that's inside that knee and just allowing and i'm picking out the word just allowing all this beautiful light to come into that area wow my whole knee just released even just saying that um allow yourself to to uh, yeah, yeah, I could feel I could feel how now it's shifted past my knee. So there's definitely some truth to something around that ego, whether it's a stubborn ego and pride, I'm unsure, but there's definitely some energy around what's going on with your, your um, uh, egoic side of yourself. And when I say egoic side, it doesn't necessarily mean the ego like, oh, look at me. It's more about that oh my gosh what's going to happen if i do this oh my gosh what's going to happen if i do that what's going to happen if I, if I don't do this and and that's the egoic part of ourselves so as soon and see as soon as i start that i can feel the energy rising back up over my knees so there's definitely some truth to that egoic energy that's that's happening right there for yourself calling okay so um draw the light into your knee and feel that light going down to your foot and feel into the energy and it was it was so interesting because kira and i were talking about this this morning on our um our our call and we were talking about you know seeing where we want to focus seeing and making a decision you know it's as simple as making the decision now that you want to make a change in your life that you want to feel like you're standing more securely on the ground when you make that decision even just saying that you've already started to move in that direction okay so I can, and it's so interesting because I can feel the the numbness of my leg going down, down, down further, and uh, and before where I felt it above the knee, it's like way down, like it's just by the ankle now. So there's so much power in just listening to the words that I'm saying to you and and agreeing with them. If you agree with them, agree with them with your heart energy. Okay. So as a reminder to everybody, if you hear something in the comments that I'm saying to everybody else then do write down those lines as another additional reading for yourself, okay? Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Oh, that's okay, uh, Sue. It's it's right at the beginning. You'll have to wait until I'm done now. <laughs> so Sue Senden, she wrote, uh, made a huge life change in the last few days, especially yesterday. I feel it was the right thing, set me free and off in a new direction. Now, I look for guidance on what is next for me. <clears throat> okay. Which, which is so comical because all I can see is, <laughs> oh, Lord, it's already underway. Okay, Sue? And it's so funny because um, this is one of those moments where I'm really asked, and I love that. Thank you for pointing that out, Marie, because I was going to say, well, I, you and I are already slated to have a conversation. And, and I held myself back from saying that because I didn't want this to be about me. And there's big uh, magpie and blue jays together in this tree up here. Okay, so look up magpies and blue jays for yourself, Sue Sendon. And um, uh, one, the magpie is looking to the right, so there's memories, and the blue jay was looking to the left, so that's imagination. So just feeling the power of all that. Now, this isn't necessarily about me, Sue. It's more about things are already in motion. So tap into being open to whatever comes through because it's going to reveal itself as you go along. Um, Kitty and I have these amazing conversations. Sometimes they're 15 minutes long. Sometimes they're 30 minutes long. But it's so powerful what unfolds in that amount of time. Same with Sue Miller. Sue Miller and I, we get on, the, on a conversation every once in a while. Same with Marie McDonald. Like all these beautiful souls – they move further along, I move further along. So it's just having conversations is is what, when you're, when you're asking, what do I look for guidance for on what the next step is? Conversations, 
get in conversations pay attention to what's happening around you it's just like me saying what's what's coming up in the things that i'm reading for everybody here and hopefully you're making notes because there's something about that right foot too and stepping into the energy of things okay i love this very very powerful so, like I said, it wasn't about me. I stood in judgment of myself and not wanting to say that we had a conversation. And yet, look at what unfolded when I moved myself out of the way when Marie pointed out it's 1111 here. I love that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, um, let, how can I, hmm, can I reply to that? I can't reply to that here, but, but do know I've replied, okay? <clears throat> Okay, so who is the next soul who wants a ask, question answered? I'm going to Maria Pringle next. Take a breath, Sandra. Ah, 21 minutes in. Hi, Sandra. Is there any guidance for how to navigate this month and moving? Any advice on organizing and staying focused? I love this. Here's another person that we, we've had a couple conversations you guys, are you getting the hint? If you're having things going on in your life, let's have a conversation. <laughs> so, um, Maria, I am, you know, it's just really, really interesting because I, I can understand the dynamics of this, of what's going on. It is the getting rid of those things that you're ready to get rid of as you are doing your packing. Like, I, I know the, the, the move isn't imminent, because I think you've got um, all of February to kind of get this going, but um, don't pack stuff that you don't need, right? Like for sure there's kid stuff that no longer serves your purpose. Get rid of it, right? There's there's probably, it's just like me, when I moved, I made a, a, a decision to not be hauling every single cookbook that I owned with me. I decided on one little bo box and I think it was four or five cookbooks and the rest all went either into storage, which I don't think any even when storage, they went out to new homes in different manners, either, either Value Village, which we my son calls it Value Village, to call it the elegant name or Salvation Army or one of these type of things, right? The uh, recycle place, right? Um, so it's one room at a time or one um, cupboard at a time, like, Right now, it looks like it's a great big mountain because you know that you have to move one household over to another household in a completely different province and uh, to a different city. And um, you're going to somewhere where winters are a little bit differently too. Um, having said that, you will acclimate to those winters. I know that we got rid of a lot of stuff in uh, September 2020. And in doing that, I am now recognizing how much I would have liked to have had some of that stuff now that we're in this place, because we never thought we would actually buy a place again, that we would actually be renting or that we would be in places where we would just be living in our travel trailer. So I am also very conscious that I am not running out and buying everything that I think I need because I bought a house. Um, I am being very conscious of that because that's not my long-term goal. My long-term goal is this will not be where we have a house. So why buy it and then have it to move or store? You know, it's just really recognizing what are your needs. Very, very powerful question. What are your needs when you get to this new place? And um, how are you moving forward? I made sure I kept every one of my crystals. None of them got lost. <laughs> In fact, I'm actually starting to create things now with the crystals I actually accumulated in my two years of traveling. Below me, um, below where you guys are right there in front of me here, I have all this beautiful white rock um, that were fingers of rock. And I've got them all laid out there. And when I want to ground, I put my feet on them. And I know I kind of digress a little bit, but just letting you know that there's there's things that you can do and it's small, simple steps. Exactly. One domino at a time. Yes. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. And I love what you wrote, Sue, about uh, excellent ties in so well with what's happening also in my moon manifestation class with Kitty and Steph. And yes, we are going to chat. <sighs> These this week and next week are just like going to be so much fun. And they're just flowing so magically and energetically because of the uh, empowering extravaganzas. So 
Um, and what Sue just said, Maria, is so very important. Letting go of the stuff is a great feeling, blessing it with joy and letting it go. And you know what? When you get rid of stuff, you also have all this beautiful new energy. You could also like literally clear your entire place right now with whatever type of energy clearing stuff you do. I know I have all kinds of examples. I, I use pyramid power energy for the most part, but there's saging, there's sound. If you, you sing too, just like me, go around to the different corners of your house and sing and clear the energy of, of everything before it is let go to new homes, right? Very, very powerful. <clears throat> and Kelly, yes, one domino at a time. Thank you for saying that. Okay. I feel like I'm on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it says that time, but I'm recognizing that it's probably a little, a couple minutes off. So let me, let me catch my breath for a minute here. Uh, well, moving forward, actually, I'm just going to move forward. Okay, so it says 25. I see that it's, it's probably about 20 minutes in. I'll have to go and look after. I'm, I'm all mixed up here. I'm going by the time on there when I should have went by the clock on the thing. So if anybody's watching this and you're wondering where your times are, take three minutes or so off your times. <laughs> okay. Um, why will you let me, there we go, reply. So Teresa, answering your question now. And we are, I'm going to actually, no, I started early. I started early. So we're probably about 21 minutes in as well. <clears throat> I have a huge uh, heat wave happening in my house all of a sudden here. I just turned up half a degree and it's incredible how hot it is. Take a breath. So, Teresa. Hi, Sandra. I've been blessed with the gifts of four Claire's. They are all pretty strong. What do I do with them and what path could I be taking to be of help to others? You know, I, I really love this question and I admire that you want to use them to help others. Uh, one of the things that I did to empower myself in that journey to discover how to help others was that I was writing morning pages. I was journaling every single day and I honestly was asking, how may I be of service to the greater good? How may I be of service to the greater good? I'm going to type that in in your, your thing there too. How <clears throat> and it was interesting the the answers that started to come through one of them was that i was a beacon for others and then i've, I've got on all these other things that have come up now like how i'm the way shore i am the beacon i'm the light i'm the tunnel i'm the guide and it's it's the things that i was doing back in 2017 have evolved me to this point okay so when you say you have four clairs i absolutely love that what i would do is is hone in on the one that is your strongest or the one that you would like to work with the most right now and start working with it a little bit more actively okay and um so the, so the energy of that it's it's really interesting what's coming up because i i can almost feel like um like there are two lines. So it feels like you're being asked to work with the one that brings you great joy. And then the one that, that is like, okay, I'd like to know more about this one. Um, one thing I want to say to you at this point is that regardless of where you are in your path of discovery, that you, it's likely the human portion of yourself will think that they're not very far along because you're comparing yourself to somebody else who you feel is further along. OK, uh, I, I've done that myself in the past. I used to look at Marilyn and Loria and be, oh, my gosh, I can't believe what she reads and how she reads. And I still am. I, I, I'm just in awe. Uh, and I keep striving to better myself. Notice I didn't say I keep striving to be like her. I don't. I strive to better myself. I strive to be more open, more aware, more connected. And that's why I, I give myself over to to let the divine guidance come in. So there are things that you do one is you are quite the knitter or crocheter you're you create these beautiful little creatures and you also i believe uh, do things with your hands in the land so there's something magical about those things 
And when you ask about being of help to others, recognize that sometimes it's not so much about, you know, like doing stuff like I'm doing right now where I'm answering questions and doing readings per se, but it's about being of service in other manners. Um, uh, I have, uh, there's a woman in our community uh, who makes beautiful healing quilts. That's her way of being of service to others. But she is Claire Cognizant. She's Claire audience. She's all those things as well, right? She has the Claire's. But she's she's bringing that beautiful healing energy into her quilts and and uh, selling the quilts or giving the quilts depending or raffling the quilts depending on what the cases are right. So it's really recognizing first of all how do you want to use your abilities right, and and if you get caught up on that okay well I want to use these abilities my Claire's as a way of helping others then, you know that that listen to what animal wants to be made for what person, right? Um, see what is unfolding in front of you. It's, it's using your clairs to become more aware. Hopefully that helps. I hope, ho hopefully that, that, I mean, I, this, this could be like a, like a probably a two, three hour class in itself because Really, when we, and my hands are on fire talking about this. So, right there, I could just feel the power of what your question is. And, and it's not so much about, uh, you, you know, you have these abilities and you want to help others. And I know that what you'd like to do is mesh them together. Well, um, you have, I don't want to say you have to do this or you have to do that. What I want you to be aware of is that it's usually not one simple, oh, do this. And this is what's going to happen, okay? Because um, there's one one beautiful soul who's in my medicine wheel program right now, and she's she's not taking part in the the actual group calls. She's listening to all the recordings, and what's unfolded for her in the last three journeys, and she's been in both quarters of it so far. So she's but done six months of the medicine wheel, is that that her guides are now bringing in specific information that as her awareness grows, she'll be able to decipher it more. I helped her to decipher it because she wasn't quite there yet. She was saying all the things that her guides wanted her to know, but it wasn't clicking. So once once I honed in on, well, this is what I'm hearing from the guides. And would you like a next action, like a call to action? Would you, would you like a next step? Once we figured out what it was that they were saying and we recognized that those were her passions, that's the key there. What are your passions, Teresa? Your passion has to be involved, right? So if you are just totally in love with creating these creatures and things for others, then go with that. Go with the flow of it, right? But include some um, spiritual or, or uh, mental health, good health type of quote or saying with it. My hands are on fire talking about this. See what we did? We continued the conversation. That's what I was saying to Sue. Continue the conversations, right? Very, very powerful. So the strongest is clairvoyance. Okay, clairvoyance. So it's that that knowing, and that's what I do with um with my um when when I do the Q and A's or when I'm in group settings, I go in being connected, aware, and all knowing. For the highest good for the most benevolent reasons and for the greatest good of all you don't want to be all knowing and then find out all this stuff that you could really care less about <laughs> you know you want to do things that are for the highest good for the most benevolent reasons and the greatest good of all or whatever phrase you use with regards to that okay beautiful beautiful <clears throat> i love that thank you Okay, so I'm going to uh, go to Marie McDonald's, any guidance. Here's one of those wide open, be careful what you ask for ones. So any guidance, let me tap into the energy of that. It's really interesting because the first thing I'm seeing is very fuzzy socks. 
something to do with fuzzy socks. So it's something to do with foot energy. Uh, it, and there's a separation with with big fuzzy socks from your feet on the ground. Now, does that mean that you're not grounding yourself? Let me tap into that. No, I could feel the energy of small roots coming down. But I think um, grounding your energy is be, is one of the things that's being asked of you. The color of the socks, I, I believe I said was a gray. They're kind of turning to a, a clearer ivory and whitish color now. <laughs> And they're no longer just your uh, your uh, socks. They're literally your whole body is covered with this this uh, grayish white uh, wool uh, all around you. So um, it feels it, and it, and you know and it's so interesting because it doesn't feel like you're closing yourself down. It feels more like you're developing a thicker skin. And wool is penetrable, like like water. You can you can get wool wet. And and it still does what it's supposed to do. It still maintains its shape, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like if you knit a sweater or something like that. So there's something about this second skin that, that you will allow in those things that serve you and the things that no longer serve you or that you're finding are you're coming up against in an interesting way, they're, they're not going to be able to penetrate that as easily. They have to work harder at penetrating it. And... Um, you know what, in a lot of cases, them working harder to penetrate your thick skin goes against what they're actually willing to put out there in effort. I love that. That's really interesting. Okay. Um, let me let me tap into that a little bit further here. Yeah, it's something, something about, um, so I guess the awareness is what the guidance is. The awareness that you have this beautiful outer skin that you've grown. Um, and it feels like it's pretty new, meaning that you may have felt like you've had a thick skin for decades, but this is a different one than you've ever had because your awareness and who you are now is entirely different. And that's what's most important to understand is, is that this thick skin that you have now is a lot different because you're different now. Okay, and you have the ability to make the decision on who's coming through and who's not coming through. Very, very powerful. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go to the next question. The last one that's in the, the Q&A post. And we are 39 minutes in now. <clears throat> Time flies when you're having fun, eh? So Mary says... I love this. What do my guides want me to know in regards to developing my Claire's? Go back and have a listen to what Teresa was, the answer for Teresa. <clears throat> and there's something else too. Oh, time is flying. This is so bizarre. I don't I don't know if these are the right minutes, you guys, so bear with me. <clears throat> so what do my guys want me to know about the Claire's? <laughs> um, they're all there. You're, and that's why I kind of giggled is because they're all there. Uh, it's that how intently are you looking for them? <clears throat> um, it's really interesting because I keep hearing these little tidbits of conversation in different places. Uh, I was working with someone yesterday and they said, oh, I was told that so-and-so in the family lineage had gifts. And that's possibly why I have gifts. In reality, we all have gifts. It's whether we choose to be aware of them and step into the energy of them. So uh, the same same comment goes for you that I believe I said for Teresa, and that's that um, picking which which Claire would you like to work with the most. <clears throat> A lot of personal truth, my throat chakra is really acting up with you, um, Mary. <clears throat> and so so I'm just kind of tapping into the energy of the Claire's because, because of course, you get them here, you have them here, you have them here. 
And then, of course, you have them here. So it's that knowing. And it feels like that knowing is is really quite powerful with you. There's like almost like there's this beautiful beacon uh, happening and, and really starting to pay attention to that knowing and, and developing that trust, that accept, trust and believe around the knowing. OK, so because your intuition is really really quite powerful is what I'm being shown by that that beautiful pyramid energy that's that's up here on your crown. So tapping into the energy of that and start to accept trust and believe. Start to notice that the things that you are seeing or hearing or witnessing, the things that you feel like you know already or your intuition, see how often they are being uh, proved like that that oh wow I saw that and it happened I yeah, I heard that and then I, I I I heard it again I saw that and then I was aware of it in other ways you know just be very very conscious of how you keep being shown these things that are happening and um, start to trust that start to start to step into the trust of that that's how I got to where I am now is I give myself completely over to these questions. I, I ideally get out of my way. And you, you saw, if you watch this from the beginning and you saw what happened with with uh, me working with somebody and Marie said it's 11-11 right now, it was with, working with Sue Sendon. I wanted to say something about, oh, you and I are having calls, uh, having a chat. And, and I wanted to, to, you know, come in and go with my ego because I don't look at me. You and I are having this conversation when, when I was backed off. I, I backed off instead of stepping into that. But then guidance came through and said no this is you are supposed to mention that you are having a conversation with them and that that's the conversations is the key part it's not necessarily about sandra it's the conversations were the important part so mary really recognizing where you're getting those little cues right so notice i am doing things for the highest good for the most benevolent reasons and the greatest good of all okay so I naturally went to conversations when it, when Marie said 1111. I could have, if I'd have been in my egoic state, said, oh, yeah, look it, I'm being told for sure. I've been told I'm not supposed to talk about me. But do you feel the energy of what I just said, how I said that, right? So my tapping into the energy and going in the highest good direction allowed me to flow easily in that direction. I hope you're getting what I'm laying down here because when we get that in that egoic state, that that is um, that's that egoic part of us drawing ourselves back. I love this, Marie. I like that. I also wear <laughs> fuzzy socks. I can see that. <laughs> I I know. I look at my hubby's um, socks. He wears sandals in the house because he's got a three quarter of an inch uh, lift built on one, so it's way easier to have an indoor pair of footwear. And he wears these these cool fuzzy fuzzy grayish white socks <clears throat> debbie do you have a question go ahead tell me your question and you know what everybody quit claiming you're late <laughs> quit claiming you're late it makes it sound like you guys are missing out on things there's a reason why you're coming in when you're coming in and that's okay it's okay to be here now right yeah <clears throat> so what is your questions? I have time for a couple more before I have to go. I'm right on time. That's the way to claim it. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. If anybody has no other questions, um, Debbie, I'll give you just a, a moment to let the, the uh, lag time catch up. You can uh, rate a question if you like before we wind up. <clears throat> I'll have a drink of water while I'm waiting. What is the next step on my spiritual journey? Here's another one of those wide open ones, just like uh, Marie had written. Marie asked, uh, any guidance, general, thank you. And it was really amazing what came through. So Debbie, um, tapping into the energy of yours, uh, yes, <laughs> besides the extravaganza. Yeah, because she's going to the empowering extravaganza. <laughs> Quick plug, it's happening February 7th, 8th and 9th. It's going to be one of those blow your socks off type of events. Um, you know what, if you're scared to come, because of what you might discover happened to you as a child. You know what? That is 
already a part of your little you that wants to be revealed, meaning not that they, you, that scared moment is going to be revealed, but it's that the little you is coming forward to say something. You are hitting an upper limit. And how much do you love yourself? Do you love yourself enough to step into the energy of working with your little you so that you can move forward? Because in all likelihood, whatever you're absolutely scared or terrified of coming up in the empowering extravaganza, it's probably not even going to come up because the way the, the little you energy works in events like that and when working with me, period, is that it's often a layer that we don't even realize is there that wants to make itself known. But you personally have to figure out if you love yourself enough to, to work with your little you to discover what it is that they actually want to work with. And by the time you get to that point that was like so terrifying, you have to look at it as like, holy cow, I was looking at that from a child's perspective. As an adult, that that is nowhere near as scary as I thought it was. In many cases, yes, there are definitely instances when it was scary. It doesn't matter what age you were. But we work beautifully in the energy of that. And we protect, we, we hold you in sacred space. Thank you for letting me say all that, Debbie. I really appreciate it. <laughs> okay. So what's the next step on my spiritual journey? <sighs> Tapping into the beautiful Debbie. Mm. So the first thing I'm seeing is, is there's something to do with all the posts that you're, that you're, uh, I believe you're sharing them. Uh, I see that they, I think they've kind of shifted gears a little bit and you're being asked to continue in that direction of whatever that shift was. So I'm not, I'm not absolutely clear because I know that for a while there you were, you were sharing posts about pets and dogs and cats and animals or something, something about them. And there was an energy involved in them. But there's something has shifted of late and whatever the more recent posts are, there's there's some kind of energy shift and you're being asked to go in that direction, you know, to feel into the energy of those in a different way. Like tap into those energies because there's something moving you in that direction for a reason. My hands are on fire talking about this. Talking about that, okay? I love what Sue just wrote. Our greatest learning comes from facing our greatest fears. Yeah. Yeah. I, who knew that mine was to love myself unconditionally? <laughs> that is amazing what's happening in my life ever since then. So, Debbie, hopefully that helped. Because it, it just, it, it, it's so interesting because they literally honed me in on those two avenues of your posts. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm just going to check the feed. I'm pretty sure that we have it all covered. I got all the questions answered in the other place as well. Thank you guys so much. I have back-to-back -back calls coming up uh, for the next uh, four hours, three, four hours. So I'm going to leave now. And uh, I really appreciate each and every one of you. You know what? You're a very integral part of my world, my communities. And the energy that you bring in is so remarkable and so beautiful. And together, one person at a time, we're creating change. We're creating this beautiful ripple effect. So before I wind up, I'm going to breathe our way through the I am love mantra, okay? So I am love. I am loved. I am loving. I am lovable. I love me. I love me. I love me. And so it is. Thank you. Bye.